final observations I'd like to make to you and share with you. It is inconceivable to anyone who has observed what's going on in Ashraf and now at Liberty for the United States of America's State Department to conclude that the Maliki government is not responsible for what transpired. There's no reason you should know this, but you cannot get in and out of Ash Liberty. You couldn't get in and out of Ashraf, and you can't get in and out of Liberty unless you go by multiple pre-positioned groups of troops from the Iraqi government. The world knows that Maliki was responsible but the State Department's in denial. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Let's talk about those hostages. The State Department has told us they're not in Iraq. It's a convenient cover-up. If you don't think they were responsible for the incursion, you certainly don't want to claim that they've got the hostages either, do you? But Amnesty International, as several of the previous speakers have spoken, have said that's where they are. And so you say to the State Department, well, if they're not there, where are they? Who took them? Have you inquired of the 42 survivors what transpired at Ashraf? It's an endless list of, frankly, misleading, disingenuous, pro-Iraqi, for whatever reason, assurances that they had nothing to do with it, and the whole world knows we're wrong, which tarnishes our credibility, in my judgment, even further. And by the way, let's not forget, six of the seven are women. Not that it makes any difference, but the fact is, Maliki's troops are responsible for and involved in all five attacks. They know exactly where these people are, and yet, we claim that there's no reason to blame the Maliki government. So I join in with the previous speakers. No aid, no support, nothing. And we can blame UNHCR, and the UN's got a lot of blame. Maliki's got a lot to be put on his shoulders. Almost crimes against humanity, as far as I'm concerned. But at the end of the day, there's one primary reason that there have been five attacks multiple deaths, hundreds of injuries. There's only one reason that the people protected under the Fourth Geneva Convention have not been provided the safety and security that they deserved. There's only one reason that these men and women have not had the opportunity to be relocated out of Iraq and then to resettlement. And frankly, the United States has to look itself in the mirror. There's a lot of blame to go around, but at the end of the day, we gave our word. And every one of these individuals that died on September 1st, 2013, probably had in their letter, they may have been buried with it, if they had a chance to be buried, the letter, everybody got an individual letter from the presiding general at the time, that said you are protected persons and the United States is responsible for your safety and security. If you're looking for just one simple reason, you don't have to know about the MEK, you don't have to worry about the FTO list, you don't have to worry about anything. Because at some point in time in their lives, these men and women, and they've been preceded by dozens of others, were told by the United States of America will protect you. But for me, as an American, when we give our word, we ought to keep it. I appreciate it very much. Thank you.